So let's look at a simple lab to allow you to time and performance profile some code that you can then, you know, go stick some code in there and see, you know, what the difference is in terms of time. But then let's also go look at navel gaze in order to have some code which actually analyzes its own behavior and changes its behavior based on the timing. All right, so guesstimate, you should go set guesstimate as your startup project and check out the source code. It's pretty simple. It has a single assembly function, which you can put assembly into in order to you know, see the differences in timing. So you can put as many assembly instructions there. You can put memory accesses versus just register accesses. Be aware that you know caching and things like that will change the timing. But so basically just there's a compiler intrinsic for RDTSC from which we can get a 64-bit you know, tick stamp count. And then we can get a tick stamp count at the end. And then we can diff them to see how long something takes to run. So go ahead and set a breakpoint at the end of the function and just run it over and over and see how long this simple move assembly instruction takes. So 2400 cycles, restart, 2400 cycles, restart, 2900 cycles, 22C. I'm actually looking for, when I ran it before, I got a nice anomaly, which speaks to the fact of running for virtualization versus non-virtualization. So at one point I got like a C06 or something like that. So I can tell you that in general, like a simple move of immediate to a register should not take this many cycles. And this is actually the result of virtualization. So you can go ahead and run this on a bare metal host as well to see how many cycles it takes there and get a sense of what kind of you know overhead we're potentially incurring as a result of virtualization, potentially messing with or intercepting the RDTSC. But that is not the more interesting one, so go ahead and switch over to navel gaze. Let's look at the source code. So the idea here is that you know you might have some malware that you're trying to analyze, and it's got a bunch of functions, and you don't know the names of any of the functions, so you're just kind of going along, skimming through the code. You should always skim through code to start with, and you're running along just trying to get a sense of what's going on, and maybe you say, oh, this function too, that seems to be kind of interesting. So let's set a breakpoint on that, and you know let's go ahead and run there. We run our debugger. Oops, I didn't, I don't think I set, I did set it as startup. Okay, so you run the debugger, step into the function. Okay, well, it turns out that's not interesting. So let's go ahead and run, continue, whatever. And we can see that in this case, the code prints out la di da di di I mean, as innocent as can be. So what's the behavior if we don't set a breakpoint in this code? If we just go ahead and run it to completion. For that, we see la di da di da got your ass hacked, didn't ya? So it's basically changing the behavior of the code based on whether or not it detects that there's breakpoints inside of it. And there's other ways to detect breakpoints, as we'll see later on in the class. But this one was just, you know, a very simple thing. It's the idea of, you know, there's going to be so many different functions inside the code that, you know, some of them might contain RDTSCs scattered throughout. And the use of those RDTSCs can be used to ultimately get some sort of difference in timing between different areas of the code. And so the processor might know that, you know, there's a specific range of timing that they might have between the, sorry, the, the malware might know that there's a range of timing that they have between, you know, the slowest processors they expect to execute on, on and the fastest ones. And they know that, like, if you set a breakpoint, even if you run it and continue as fast as humanly possible, that's still human time scales, and that's going to be detectable. So let me try that one more time. So I'm going to run, and then I'm going to continue immediately. So I went as fast as humanly possible, but still it detects the timing difference because that's human time scales of clicking, and it's going to alter its behavior accordingly. So this was just RDTSC, an interesting little miscellaneous instruction, which some of the folks taking this for malware analysis might run into eventually in terms of malware trying to alter its behavior based on the timing. So the conclusion is that a human stepping through code is easy for code to detect. And hopefully, you know, now that you know the existence of that, you as a malware analyst would be aware of what you can do to try to combat that. That's the kind of thing that'll be covered in future malware classes. And so ultimately, RDTSC is just sort of an interesting little assembly instruction, which in my opinion is less fun than a barrel of monkeys, but more fun than a tube stock of scorpions.